Hey everyone, today we're talking about progressing skills and the thing you need to understand most about progressing skills is skill progressions are designed to keep people safe. So when you're progressing something, the question is not how do I make the skill harder and more complicated and dangerous, it is how do I keep the athlete safe while progressing their awareness of how to move. So. We're going to get into it. Surfaces, direction, and distance. Okay, so progressions. I'm going to call it the inversion effect. So you basically have the bottom. you got basic goals, intermediate goals, advanced goals, and elite goals. And through that process, you kind of have two triangles, and they're on top. one's on top of the other, upside down. So you have this broad base of movements at the basic goals, run, jump, crawl, roll, handstand, cartwheel, limber. In the intermediate goals, it starts to narrow, round off, front handspring, back handspring. In the advanced goals, it starts to widen, but it doesn't widen very wide. It's, it's whips, layouts, single salto, twisting. They're basically the, the things you need. When you get to the elite goals, it goes back to broad because you got double twisting, double layouts, triple twisting. There's so many more combinations of how you put everything together that the options open back up. And so this is how the skills are kind of progressing. It starts broad, it goes narrow, then it goes from narrow and it goes back to broad. And kind of moving through this process is what um, progressions are really helping guiding, guide the students to. Okay, so the goal. So teach a concept and correlate it through all skill categories. So the idea is that you're going to have straight legs and you're going to correlate straight legs in crawling, rolling, handstands, cartwheels, limbers. The idea would be is can you take a concept and keep that theme going through all the progressions. That's the goal of progressions is you're progressing an idea or concept basically. So the direction. Okay, so direction is, you know, you got to drop, you got to fall, and they're basically the same thing, right? But I just had to dis differentiate between a drop being vertically straight down and a fall gradually falling over time uh, and, and have some form of travel involved. Um, horizontal travels horizontally, travels vertically, and there's a rise. It travels horizontally and vertically, and so it rises. Okay, how you progress is going to be determined on also direction. So things that go down tend to be easier to do than things that go up because you're working against gravity versus working with gravity. At the same time, things that go with gravity tend to need a little bit more control. If you're doing flips and you're landing, then you need to be able to absorb or, or handle the impact loads of the land. So that's a, that's a thing to consider. So what direction are you traveling? Skills that go vertical are just harder to do than skills that go horizontally. And falling is just, you don't really have to try that hard. So falling can be lots of fun for kids. Distances. So there's the distance with the shape change. Like how much shape change? I'm going from a tuck to a straight. There's a lot of shape change. I'm going from a straddle to a handstand. A lot of shape change. I'm going from a pike to straight. A lot of shape change. So there's the distance of the shape change. Okay, and if you don't have a very big shape change and it doesn't take as much time, then you can do it quicker. So understanding how much distance you have to cover is going to help you get in sync with the surface and how the skills work and the difficulty. The less shape change you need, the easier something should be. Think about arm swing and a jump, how much those arms have to travel and distance wise to get to a straight position. And then there's distance and surfaces. And uh, it looks like I have SOFF, which is supposed to be soft versus stiff. Um, so you got surfaces. And surfaces are going to travel a distance. So you look at AB, it's kind of like looking at a bar um, from a side view. The, the bar is going to travel a certain distance. It's not going to travel a lot, but that distance does matter that it travels. Trampoline, C to D. It's going to, the bed the, that you're landing on is going to travel a distance. And it, it's going to depend on how high you're jumping or how much energy you're putting into the system that will determine how much the bed moves. But that's going to determine a lot in surface. Springboards, how much does the springboard compress? 
You also have um, mats, G to H, just the, the thickness or the stiffness of a mat, whether it's an eight inch or a four, to, four inch, and that is going to affect the skill. So things that tend to move a lot more tend to help the athlete and things that move a lot less tend to cause the athlete to have to absorb the energy or generate it more through their body. So we got surface position then. So now we have distances of surface position. And so you got A to B, there's a falling action. So we have a wedge and somebody could roll down it, they could crawl down it. So you have this down direction, but you could also go up and you could work against it. But there is a distance that they are traveling and they are traveling horizontally and they're traveling vertical or up and down. And, and that's going to change the difficulty of the skill. How far you want to travel, C to D, just distance of traveling horizontally, that will change the difficulty. The further the distance that is traveled, usually the more difficult the skill is. The further away it is traveling from the center of the earth, the more difficult the skill is. So you have blocks, E, F, G, mat surfaces that are raising in height. You could just raise the height of the surface and try to do something up something, up a surface, and that will increase difficulty. Shrink the surface that you're trying to make it up. If you can't make it up a pit, put two eight inches in. You can't do two eight inches, do one eight incher. Um, but decrease the height to make things easier. And that's basically um, progressing skills is just what surfaces are you using. And the harder the surface, the higher the impact force, the softer the surface, the lower impact force the direction you are going. If you're going towards the center of the earth, it becomes easier. If you're moving further away from it, it becomes more difficult. And then the distances, how far are you traveling? The further you have to travel, the more power you need. The more power you need, the more impact you're going to have, the more dangerous the skill. So learn to scale these things appropriately to the athlete's needs, not necessarily what you want to achieve for that day. And that is how you're going to be keeping the athletes safe. And that's the priority of using progressions appropriately.